Hello everyone, this is Babamots. Welcome to another Homeworlds game commentary. This one's between Z-Watcher and Tachivorian. Depending on the order in which I decide to release these videos, you might, uh, in the future, hear me say that I've never casted a game with Tachivorian before. But that's because I recorded that in the past. Um, Z-Watcher, I think, has been playing somewhat longer than Tachivorian. But uh, Tachivorian is not a bad player, from what I can tell. But as I've as I've looked at their records, I've tried hard not to look too closely because I tried not to see what uh, the result of this game was. This was the re most recent game they'd played. As I'm recording this, this is on, uh, was started on April seventeenth, twenty twenty three. Uh, Z-Watcher starting off with Yellow Gemini Medium Tachivorian, uh, picks a Yellow Goldilocks, so the home worlds are connected. This is a microverse game. I have downloaded lots and lots of game records, and at some point here I'm going to do some analysis, but my suspicion is that microverse favors the first player maybe less than small universe but uh i would be very i'm very interested to find out if connecting the home worlds is a poor idea for player two not that data necessarily answers that question definitively but gives me some indication all right z trading for blue uh blue is the color of the only small star so maybe that makes sense Tech picking red. A uh, little indecision, but they commit to it. I think it's a, it's a good idea to get red early in a microverse to make sure that you don't get uh, some kind of strange move in and build into overpopulation play from your opponent, but I think Tachivorian might regret uh, not getting blue faster, since Z could possibly cause some trouble there. Z actually thinking about undoing their first move, trading for red as well. Um, yeah, I don't think it was actually that urgent. I, I think Z was afraid that Tech could move, say, their large ship in, and then uh, sacrifice R1 for for a dominating advantage in Z's home, but I think Z had at least one more turn to respond to that. I don't think they needed to trade away the blue that they already spent a turn getting. Uh, Tech builds green, not opening up the mediums for Z. Z also picks green. Ooh, that is not a good move. Tech, considering moving their large and disease home um, well I guess it would actually come out about even so if tech commits to this move then Z captures the invading G3 tech moves in their G1 for the overpopulation it's now Z's turn both players just have a small red at their home they'll both need to trade for green and it's pretty well a reset game, except that nobody has a large at that point. Um, yeah, they they committed to it, and Z captures, and Dak moves in their little green. Well, isn't that an interesting start? Um, this could have been the position after their opening moves, if uh, both players had chosen a small red for their first ship, which I think you would never do. Both players will trade for green, I'm sure. And then build. Uh, you know, Tech, I wonder if Tech actually worked out that... Oh. How strange. They agreed to a draw. Well, from what I can tell... Hmm... 
Should this be a drawn position? It doesn't seem like it to me. Or does it? Okay, if, if a player builds the last... Oh, how interesting. If either player builds the last G1, their opponent gets the G2. And then the player who built the G1 first shouldn't then proceed to build a G2 because their opponent will simply move in one of their greens for the overpopulation and win. They could trade for red, for example, but then they're not going to have... They, they may not have a medium green in time to... Uh, prevent their opponent from moving in the medium, trading for red and starting to capture stuff. Huh. That's the simplest drawn position I think I've ever seen. And it came up in a real game. Huh. Okay. Well, I wonder if, uh, if Tack knew that that's what they were getting into when they started that. Okay. Well, what if we, uh, Hmm. Trying to think if there's a way that I can find another game between these players without giving away the result. Okay. These two players have played two times. All right. Close your eyes if you don't want to see the results of these other games. I'm going to hold a piece of paper in front of this, my screen so that I don't see the result. Okay. I pick the second game they played. Keep your eyes closed. Oops. Oh, I spoiled it for myself. Okay. I'm going to try that again. Okay, I picked the first game they played. I wasn't fast enough to move the paper. I know where to hold the paper, but I have to move it around a little bit. And then I have to refresh this page to give myself a random perspective button. Okay, well. So here we go with another one. Um, if you're wondering about that random perspective button, then send me a message and I'll tell you how I made it because that's not normal. All right. Uh, you can open your eyes now <laughs> and we'll try another game between these players. Uh, this was played November, 2022. So five months earlier, looks like tack did not have as much experience at that point. So this might be a quick victory for Z, but we'll find out together. Shall we? All right, Z takes a red banker. Tack takes a yellow fortress. Ooh, there's thunder outside right now. If uh, my power goes out, then you'll probably never see this video. Both players building. Z trading for red, which matches the small star. Tack follows. Z builds medium. Tack does as well. Z trades for a small yellow. Tack also picks small yellow. Z continues building red. Tack matches. Z spreads out red. So does Tack. No, they changed their mind. They're building green. Okay, so here we're starting to diverge some more. Tack trading for a little blue. Uh, that blocks primary purpose of that, I think, would be to block Z from building um, even a medium red again. Tech changes their mind, spreads out the reds uh, to a small yellow star. That opens up mediums for Z first, but then Tech can 
build a medium of their own right after, which is exactly what happens. Uh, attack a little in, indecisive, but they commit to it. All right, what does Z do now? Um, Z might push push their small yellow forward to threaten tech with an overpopulated home star. Uh, pushing the oh well, that's all right too. Yeah, yeah, moving the the medium yellow defends their little red in all tear from a an attack by tax R two. All right, tech trades little yellow for little blue. Uh, that blocks Z from building the medium yellow, though. Uh, yeah, that's fine. I won't won't complain about that one. Um, tech thinking instead about spreading out the yellow. I think it would be nice for Tech to have somewhere that they could safely build yellow. If Z should happen to decide to build the medium. Although with this, uh, so if Tech moves their, their medium yellow to this colony, then Z, I think, would want to do a shopping spree. Uh, sacrifice the G3, build Y2 and Y3 at their home, and a Y3 in Altair. That doesn't leave. Um, Z's home from this position is not in striking distance for any of Tack's yellows, so Tack could not overpopulate the yellows that Z puts at home, and there would only be two yellows in Altair, so that would be a safe shopping spree. Uh, so I don't think Tack should do this. If they're going to spread out their yellows, I think they should consider moving the small yellow out instead they commit to it. Let's see if Z likes the shopping spree. Building a little green instead. Um, yeah, that's that's fine. I My guess is they just didn't see the shopping spree, or they didn't like that they would be giving up all of their green to do it, and so they wanted to build a little green first. I do this sometimes. Before I do a shopping spree, I'll build a, a green so that I'm not spending my only green. Uh, tech building red, that would open up the large reds for Z to build. Um, tech changes their mind. Tech looking at a shopping spree now with red and yellow. Uh, that gives up tax only green. They don't get a, an additional large from it, and they've opened up two colors of larges for Z to choose from. Um, I don't like that too much. From here, Z can just vanilla build yellow or red in Altair, a, a large for that matter, or could even sacrifice the G3 to build one of each. Yeah, I think I would sacrifice G3 Build red three, yellow three in Altair, and then a yellow three back at home. And Tech can't build that remaining uh, R3. So I think this is a poor move from Tech. Tech should take it back. They do. They trade the little yellow for blue. They've thought about that a few times. Let's see if they commit this time. Nope. Building a little green. They commit. Um yeah, that's fine. That's a mild move. Tech looking at a shopping spree in yellow. Yep, that's the uh, what I was suggesting before. I guess really what should have happened was that Tech should have used... Uh, Z-Watcher could have done this on their last turn, but they built the little green instead. Tack on their previous turn should, in theory, have blocked this move, uh, possibly by discovering a, a large yellow star, or trading out the little yellow for blue would have done it too. Um, and now Z's got three yellows at home, but Tack can't reach. Uh, Tack is down on material pretty substantially, and it's looking good for Z. All right, Tack finally does... 
trade out for blue. Z threatens the yellow. Um, Z threatens the red ship in Betelgeuse, which is a yellow star. Although the real Betelgeuse, I think, is actually a red giant. I can't remember. I got the Astronomy Merit Badge, but uh, I have forgotten much that I once knew. All right, so Tack could run this red ship around. Well, actually, there's not many, many places it could go safely, so it would it can't even go to another yellow star that would give it the opportunity to run again. Uh, this R2's got to go back home or else get captured. Yeah, because if it just moves to a green star, the Y3 can follow it there. And uh, then Z can capture it with a sacrifice. And that looks like looking like what's going to happen. Uh, tack could, I suppose... You know, if I'm Tack, I would strongly consider building the Y1 here in Caster. Because that would give me a chance to overpopulate Z's yellows at home with the Y2 sacrifice. Um, Tack would still be down in material after losing this, uh, this R2 to a capture, but it would be a lot closer. Tack looking at this achieves largely the same thing, I suppose, uh, moving their Y2 closer to Z-Watcher. Okay, Z-Watcher spreads out their, uh, their yellows to negate that threat. The which they also could have done in response to Z-Watcher building that little yellow. The advantage to building the little yellow is that they would have had an additional ship. Um, and in fact, one that is safe from invasion by Z-Watcher's spare Y3, because these, well, safe-ish, because those two yellows together would be defended by tax additional yellow at home. If the Y3 joined those two yellows, Tack could move in a fourth yellow to overpopulate Z's um, Y3. But anyway, uh, let's see if they commit to this. Oh, what, what happened? Oh, that I, I got off. I forgot whose turn it was. Okay. Z, um, Z spread out their yellows. Tack builds blue. Uh, Tack could potentially get back into this with dominating the blues, I suppose. Uh, Z unsurprisingly sacrifices R1 to capture the R2. Now Tack spreading out the blues. Uh, trouble with this being that blue is, is vulnerable to invasion, and like Tack's R2 a moment ago, is going to run out of places to run. Uh, yep, yeah, and Tack even concedes there. All right, well, but that was earlier in uh, in Tack's career. Tack is at least able to uh, pull off a, a funny little draw like we saw in the first game. All right, well, two games for the, the price of one this time. Thanks for watching.